All right, shalom, everyone. We're back. Um, we are uh, going to be finishing our Torah portion um, for the Sabbath today. So we, my mom's going to be reading for you guys um, Psalms chapters 1 to chapter, let's see here, chapter 11. Okay, so okay. go ahead, mom. Okay, Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit, sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of Yahuwah, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. What? Whatever he does prospers, not so the wicked. They are like chaff, but the wind, that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For, for the Elohim watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Okay, Psalm 2. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth take their stand and rulers gather together against, against the Elohim. Yahuwah. And against, I'm sorry, yeah. against Yahuwah. And against his anointed ones. Let us break their chains, they say, and throw off their fetters. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will proclaim the decree of the Elohim. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your Abba. Ask of me, and I will make the nations rage, uh, excuse me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will rule them with an iron scepter. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve, serve Yahuwah with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry. And you will be destroyed in your way, for his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Psalm 3. O oh, Yahuwah, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, Yahuwah will not deliver him. But you are a shield about me. O oh, Yahuwah, my glorious one, who lifts up my head. To Yahuwah I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill, his set apart hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because Yahuwah sustains me. I will not fear the ten of thousands drawn up against me on every side. Arise, O oh, Yahuwah, deliver me. O oh, my Elohim, for you have struck all my enemies on the jaw. You have broken the teeth of the wicked. From Yahuwah comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, O oh, my righteous Elohim. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. How long, O oh men, will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love delusions and seek false gods? Know that Yahuwah has set apart the godly for himself, but Yahuwah will hear when I call to him. In your anger, do not sin. When you are on your beds, search your hearts and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and trust in Yahuwah. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face 
shine upon us, O Yahuwah. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone are Yahuwah. Make me dwell in safety. Psalm 5. <clears throat> Give ear to my words, O Yahuwah. Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry for help, my king and my Elohim. For to you I pray. Morning by morning, O Yahuwah, you hear my voice. Morning by morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. You are not an Elohim who takes pleasure. With you, the wicked cannot dwell. The arrogant cannot stand in your presence. You hate all wrong. Excuse me, all who do wrong. You destroy those who tell lies, bloodthirsty and deceitful men. Um, you, you, you who are of course. But I, by your great mercy, will come into your house in reverence and bow down toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Yahuwah, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make straight your way before me. Not a word from their mouth can be trusted. Their heart is filled with destruction. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongue, they speak deceit. Declare them guilty, O Yahuwah. Let their intrigues be their downfall. Banish them for their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing with joy. Spread your protection over them, that those who love your name may rejoice in you. For surely, O Yahuwah, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Psalm 6. O oh, Yahuwah, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, Yahuwah, for I am faint. O oh, Yahuwah, heal me, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, O oh, Yahuwah, how long? Turn, O oh, Yahuwah, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. No one remembers you when he is dead. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for Yahuwah has heard my weeping. Yahuwah has heard my cry for mercy. The Elohim accepts my prayer. May all my enemies be ashamed and dismayed. May they turn back in sudden disgrace. Psalm 7. O oh, Yahuwah, my Elohim, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me. For they will tear me like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one to rescue me. O oh, Yahuwah, my Elohim, if I have done this and there is guilt on my hands, if I have done evil to him who is at peace with me, or without cause have robbed my foe, then let my enemy pursue and overtake me. Let him trample my life to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. Arise, O oh, Yahuwah, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Awake, my Elohim, decree justice. Let the assembled peoples gather around you. Rule over them on high. Let, let, the, let Yahuwah judge peoples. Judge me, O Yahuwah, according to my righteousness. According to my integrity, O Most High. O righteous Yahuwah, who searches minds and hearts, bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous pure. My shield is Yahuwah Most High, who saves the upright in heart. Yahuwah is a righteous judge 
and Elohim who expresses his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword. He will bend and strain his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons. He makes ready his flaming arrows. He who is pregnant with evil and conceives trouble gives birth to disillusionment. He who digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit he has made. The trouble he causes recoils on himself. His violence comes down on his own head. I will give thanks to Yahuwah because of his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of Yahuwah Most High. Psalm 8. O Yahuwah, our Elohim, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with splendor and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds and the beasts of the field birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Yahuwah, our Elohim, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Psalm 9. I will praise you, O Yahuwah, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will say praise to your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause. You have sat on your throne, judging righteously. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken the enemy. You have uprooted their cities, even the memory of them has perished. Yahuwah reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He will judge the world in righteousness. He will govern the people for justice. Yahuwah is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you. For you, Yahuwah, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to Yahuwah and throne in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cry of the afflicted. Oh, Yahuwah, see how many enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of the daughter of Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Elohim is known by his justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked return to the grave, all the nations that forget Yahuwah, but the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the wicked ever perish. Arise, O Yahuwah, let not man triumph, let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, O Yahuwah, let the nations know they are but men. Psalm 10. Why, O oh Yahuwah, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man 
hunts down the weak, who are caused, caught in the schemes he devises. He boasts of the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and reviles the Elohim. In his pride, the wicked does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for Yahuwah. His ways are always prosperous. He is haughty and your laws are barking him. He sneers at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will shake me. I'll always be happy and never have trouble. His mouth is full of curses and lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush, he murders the innocent, watching in secret for all for his victims. He lies in wait like a lion of earth. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, Yahuwah has forgotten. He covers his face and never sees. Arise, Yahuwah, lift up your hand. Oh, Yahuwah, do not forget the helpless. Why does the wicked man revile Yahuwah? Why does he say to himself, he won't call into account, but you, O oh Yahuwah, do see trouble and grief. You consider it to take it in hand. The victim commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and evil man. Call him to account for his wickedness. That would not be found out. Yahuwah is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You hear, O oh Yahuwah, the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cry. Defending the fatherless and the oppressed in order that man who is of the earth may terrify no more. Psalm 11. To Yahuwah, I take refuge. How then can you say to me, flee like a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bows. Bows. They set their arrows against the strings to shoot from the shadows at the upright in heart. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yahuwah is in his set-apart temple. The Elohim is on his heavenly throne. He observes the sons of men. His eyes examine them. Yahuwah examines the righteous, but the wicked and those who love violence, his soul hates. On the wicked, he will rain fiery coals and burning sulfur. A scorching wind will be their lot. For Yahuwah is righteous. He loves justice. Upright men will see his face. Okay. <clears throat> I got a couple of notes here from what my mom just read in these past 10 chapters. <clears throat> this is a good refreshing for us that are going to be doing a study soon about how to prove he's the Messiah using the Old Testament only. Okay, so <clears throat> where the NIV says anointed, the yeah. the Greek would say, the Septuagint would say Christos, okay? This is, this is specifically referring to Yahusha. Mm -hmm. The kings of the earth stood still, stood up. The rulers gathered themselves together against Yahuwah and against his Messiah, okay? So that's specifically not just a random anointed person like Cyrus. This mm -hmm. is a, a specific... No. Messiah he's referring to. <clears throat> and also in chapter two, there was some other stuff too pertaining to him. I wanted to look at because there was let's see, shall I speak against them. I have made them here we go, verse six. But I have been made king by him on Sion, his set apart mount. So this is David speaking prophetically, yes. but we know that Yahusha 
becomes the king of kings. So this is like a, a dual type of prophecy thing. <clears throat> and where is the verse that says um, today? Here we go. Verse seven is the main one I wanted to look at also. So you had verse two of chapter two. You got verse six and now verse seven. Declaring the ordinance of Yahuwah, meaning the law of Yahuwah, Yahuwah said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. So we got to ask ourselves a question here. Was David begotten by Yahuwah? Was he physically, genetically begotten? Or is this talking about someone else? Because David was not begotten from Yahuwah genetically or DNA wise. Yahusha was. Yahusha took on flesh of a baby, of a human child, and literally is called the son of the most high. So, and it says in the book of John, it says he is the only begotten, one and only begotten son. So David is not Yahuwah's begotten son. So no. David, what David is doing here is he's foreshadowing <clears throat> a messianic prophecy there. Okay, so, and let's see here. We got a bunch, we got two or three from chapter eight that I wanted to look at. In, in verse two, out of the mouth of babies and sucklings, you have perfected praise because of your enemies that you might put down the enemy and the avenger. So the reason I brought this up is that Yahusha himself in the New yes. Testament quotes this. Yes, He actually rebukes the Pharisees when the Pharisees trying to come against him and say, oh, why are you allowing children to speak? Why do you I permit them to speak? And then he quotes this verse in the Septuagint. I don't know how word for word exact the Masoretic is in this verse, but it's probably, okay, it is the same thing. Or ordained strength. Oh, yeah, that, no, no. It's supposed to say perfected praise. Yeah, so the Masoretic would say ordained strength. So that kind of screws up that quotation there. Um, then if we look at verses four, five, and six of this chapter, what is man that you should be mindful of him or the son of the son of man? that you visit him. You made him a little less than the angels. Paul quotes this in the book of Hebrews. He says, Messiah was made a little bit less than the angels. So when it's talking about the son of man here, a lot of people would interpret it's just talking about Adam or whatever. No, it's actually talking about Yahushua when it says he was made a little less than the angel. You have crowned him with esteem and honor. You have set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. Remember, uh, in, in, uh, Paul also talks about that he says that all things must be put under his feet. I think it's in the book of 1 Corinthians. It says that all things still have to be put under his feet. So it still has to happen. So that's a messianic prophecy that hasn't been fully fulfilled yet, that Yahushua is going to fulfill, that all things will be subjected under him all of his enemies will be put under his feet so that psalms 8 6 is directly referring to yahushua <clears throat> let's see here and then we got i got just a few from chapter 9 and we can move on to brother jeff and sister zakiah reading our last portion for today um but i have a couple here that i think are pretty important too from chapter 9 okay got one in verse 10 and let them know that your and let them that know your name trust in you for you oh you who have not failed them that diligently seek you the reason i wanted to bring this up is it's a little different in your modern bibles it'll just say that he does not forsake them that seek him the Septuagint says that diligently seek him so a little difference there and the last one i wanted to bring up was verse 20 appoint oh yahuwah a lawgiver over them let the heathen know that they are men now this screams out yahushua to me a lawgiver okay and you can actually cross that with genesis 49 of the septuagint verse 11 about the about yahushua being the lawgiver or verse 10 actually <clears throat> okay, let's see here. It says, a ruler shall not fail. <clears throat> Sorry, my bad. <clears throat> a, a ruler shall not fail 
from Yehuda nor a prince from his loins until there comes the things stored up for him. And he is the expectation of nations. Okay, so hold on. There is one version that says lawgiver. Yeah, it's actually the Masoretic, surprisingly. Okay, yeah, the Masoretic actually says lawgiver in Genesis 49 10. Mm -hmm. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, meaning the tribe of Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. And Shiloh is a Hebrew term that means peace. Like it's a it's a place and it's also a name that means peace until um, their peace comes and unto him shall be the gathering of the people. So the Masoretic text version of Genesis 49, 10, surprisingly enough, talks about a lawgiver, which we just pointed out in Psalms 9, 10. So that's the connection I wanted to make there is Genesis 49, 10, along with Psalms chapter 9, verse 10. And uh, so I'll give the floor to Brother Jeff and Sister, Sister Sakaya to read now Mark chapter 1, chapter 5. Make sure. All right. So I've got uh, the book. Of, I got the book of Mark and I still have my King James because my the rest of my materials on my dead phone at the moment. So, um, okay. So I'll start at chapter one and we're going to five. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Bro. <laughs> All right. In the beginning of the gospel of Yahusha, the son of the son of Yahuwah. As it is written in the prophets, behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Yahuwah, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they, and they of Jerusalem, and all were baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was sackcloth with camel's hair and with a girdle of skin about his loins, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latch of whose sandal I am not worthy to unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Ruach. And it came to pass in those days that Yahusha came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straight away coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Ruach like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Ruach dr drive him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Hasatan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered to him. Now after that, John was put in prison. Yahusha came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of Yahuwah, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of Yah is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Yahusha said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Straight away they forsook their nets and followed him. And when he had gone a little further thence, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship mending their nets. And straight away he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they went into Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. And there were in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Yahusha of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who, who you are, the Holy One of Yah. And Yahusha rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed, insomuch as they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? 
For with what authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do, do obey him? And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they, they tell, I'm not sure what that means, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. Nice. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed in, into a solitary place and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next town that I may preach there also. Therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all of Galilee and cast out devils. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down at him, and saying unto him, If you will, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Yahusha moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said unto him, I will, be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was cleansed. And I straightly charged him, and forthwith sent him away, and said unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded, for a testimony unto them. But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Yahusha could no more openly enter the city, but was without but was without in desert places and they came to him from every quarter and in uh, chapter two and again he entered into capernaum after some days and it was noised that he was in the house and straight away many were gathered together in so much as there was no room to receive them no not so much as about the door and he preached the word unto them and they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come near to him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where, wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Then Yahusha saw their faith, and he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but Yah only? And immediately when Yahusha perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said to them, Why reason you these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on the earth to forgive. I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch as they were all amazed and glorified Yah, saying, We never saw it in this fashion. And he went forth again by the seaside, and all the multitude resorted unto him, and he taught them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the seat of custom. And said unto him, Follow me. And he arose and followed him. It came to pass that as Yahusha sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Yahusha and his disciples. For there were many that followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him meet with the publicans and sinners, they said unto him, they said unto his disciples, How is it that he eats and drinks with publicans and sinners? Um, it's a reference to Torah. Um, when Yahusha heard it, he said to them, they that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. 
I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And the disciples of John and the Pharisees used, used to fast. And they come and say unto him, why do the disciples of John and the Pharisees fast, but, but your disciples do not? And Yahushua said to them, can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom, while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in those days. No man soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Also, the new piece that is that filled it up taketh away from the old, and a rent is made worse. No man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine doth burst the bottles. And the wine is spilled, and the bottles will be marred, but the new wine must be put into new bottles. And it came to pass, and he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck ears of corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do you on the Sabbath day do that which is not lawful? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did? When he had need, he was and was hungered, and he that were with him, how he went into the house of Yah in the days of Abiathar the high priest, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful to eat, but for the priest, and gave also to them which were with him. He said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, not the man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And he entered into the synagogue, and there was a man there which had a withered hand, and they watched him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he said unto the man with the withered hand, Stand forth. And he said unto them, Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day or to do evil, to save a life or to kill? But they held their peace. And when he had looked around about them with anger, being grieved for their hardness of their hearts, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was restored, whole as the other. It's just like Moses, you guys. Little side note. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. But Yahushua withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan. And they about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, they came unto him. And he spoke to his disciples that a small ship would wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch as they pressed upon him for to touch him, as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the son of Yah. And he straightly charged them that they should not make him known. Wow. And he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto him whom he would. And they came unto him. He ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. And Simon he surnamed Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James. And he surnamed them. And please correct me if it's different in a different version. Um, that he surnamed them the Boanerges, which is the sons of thunder. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. And they went into a house. And the multitude came together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said, He is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub, and by the prince of the devils casteth out devils. And he called them unto him, and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? And if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand. 
but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he is first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Verily I say to you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But thou, the, but he that blaspheme against the Ruach have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he hath an unclean spirit. There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat around him, and they said unto him, Behold, your mother and your brother are outside for you. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother and my brother? He looked around about them, which sat about him, and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of Yah, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. Chapter 4. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. He taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100. And he said unto them, He that has ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, they that were about him with the twelve asked him the parable. And he said to them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of Yah. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. That seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And, and how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction and persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, which hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lusts of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, receive it, bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundredfold. And he said to them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but, but that it should come abroad. If any man has ears, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what you hear, what with measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given for he that hath to him shall be given and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that which he hath and he said so is the kingdom of yah as if it as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow he knoweth not how for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself first the blade then the ear after that, the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. And he said, Where unto shall we liken the kingdom of Yah? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds in the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches, 
and that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. And when many such parables spake he of the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spake he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. And the same day, when the evening was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other, other ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat unto the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we die? And he arose, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And <laughs> until now, they'd only seen him cast out devils. This is a real big one, I guess. Yeah, we already thought he was amazing. All right, so chapter five. Yep. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Yahusha afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Yahusha, O son of the Most High Yah? I adjure thee by Yah, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion. But we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there were nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Yahushua gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea <coughs> and were choked in the sea. They that fed, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country as they went out to see what it was that was done. And when they came to Yahushua to see that he possessed, hold on one more time. And they came to Yahushua and saw him that he was possessed with the devil and had the legion. Wait, hold on one second. And I'm gonna... saw the man who has been possessed. And they came to Yahusha and then, okay, and then saw him that was possessed with the devil and had had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They that saw it told them how, to be, how it befell him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come unto the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Yahushua suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, tell them how great things Yahuwah has done for you, and have compassion on you. And he departed and began to publish in the capitalists how great things Yahushua had done for him, and all men did marvel. And when Yahusha passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Yahusha went with him, and much people followed and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood for twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physical, of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Yahusha, came and pressed behind and touched his garment. 
For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Yahushua, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest thy multitude thronging thee, and saith, Who touched me? And he looked around about thee, about her that had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spoke, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, My daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Yahushua heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. <clears throat> and he that suffereth no man to follow him, said Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, conceived the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. When he's come in, he saith unto them, Why, why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but she's asleep. And they laugh him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kimi, which is, being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of age of twelve years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Right. So that was one through five. There's a couple pretty nifty things in there. A couple references to Torah anyway. Yeah. Comes through there straight away. <laughs> right. So let's see. We have the story of the woman touching his garment or probably more specifically touching his tassel. Um, and so this would be referring to the Zitzis showing mm -hmm. that he's commanding his um, disciples to keep Torah with the Zitzis um, and that she had such a belief in her that if she touched his garment, his tassel, his Zitzis, she would be made whole. Um, that's one thing that came to mind. I got a, I got a note about that, Doug. Yeah. The Go ahead. Talks about a woman who's having her time of blood. If you touch her or anything that she touches is unclean, right? But when she touched him, he wasn't made unclean. She was made clean. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so it wasn't like when, when Torah talks about it, it says that like if she would have touched a normal guy, he would have been unclean, right? Touching his garment, they would have had to wash the garment. Um, but what happened is, she was cured of her blood issue, therefore making her clean, and she was unclean for the 12 years prior. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's a great that uh, that's a great find there because that shows he's not he's not a regular a regular man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A regular man actually Yahusha would have had to, if he was a regular guy, he would have had to be quarantined because of that, or he not quarantined, but he would have become unclean from her. So that that is that's a great find with that one, that goes back to Torah. So yeah, uh, let me see here. Uh, you did bring up a good point about Mark four thirty nine to forty one, where it talks about they were they were just amazed that the sea obeyed him, and I think I know an answer why they're so amazed. In the book of Psalms, it mentions that Yahuwah calm tells the sea to stop. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Uh, the Lord tells the sea its boundaries. I can find that real quick because I think that's why they were. Yeah, here we go. Oh, it's actually in Proverbs. This is interesting. The same chapter that talks about wisdom. Okay. Proverbs 8, 29, when he gave the sea its boundary, so the waters would not overstep his command. And when he marked out the foundries of foundations of the earth. So my assumption would be why they're so 
mind boggled that the CEO obeyed him is that they, they know the Tanakh. They know that you, who is the only one that can do that. And without a doubt, and without a doubt or shred of doubt in their mind, that the Pharisees, the doubt that they're interjecting about it being a devil casting out devils, this is absolutely an answer that that's not the case. Yeah. Because yeah. as a devil, he wouldn't have the power over the sea like that, you know? No. no Satan can't command creation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, none of the fallen angels could command the sea or the mountains. I mean, if you read the whole, let, let's actually look at the context of Proverbs 8, because this talks about the whole creation here in context. And it actually talks about the person wisdom who we believe to be Yahushua Messiah. See, it says here, Yahuwah made me the beginning of his ways for his works, meaning, you know, by Yahusha, everything was created. Okay. He established me before the time was in the beginning, before he made the earth, even before he made the depths, before the fountains of water came forth, before the mountains were settled, before all hills, he begets me. Yahuwah made countries and inhabited tracts in the highest inhabited parts of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was present with him. And when he prepared the throne upon the winds, and when he strengthened the clouds above, and when he secured the fountains of the earth, and when he strengthened, and when he strengthened the foundations of the earth. Let here. there let there be light. All that happened after he said, "Let there be light." Everything you yeah. just mentioned. Yep. I, I believe I believe that he is that light because the sun wasn't made till day four. And when he says, let there be light as the first thing that he creates. Yeah, I believe, I believe the light of men is who he's talking about. Sun, the, the light. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The light, the light he's referring to is himself. It's kind of like he's talking to himself. I mean, if you got two people that are one person, that kind of makes sense. Um, you know, so there you got him talking to his son, like let you know, let there be light, and then there's light, you know, Yahushua is the light of the world, um, and then it even says in verse 30 here, I was by him, John 1, 1, suiting myself to him, I was that wherein he took delight, you just read that earlier, my, my beloved son, who I take delight in, right, so they're actually getting that from Proverbs eight thirty. and daily I rejoiced in his presence continually, so, and then it, it goes into more about the creation says for, for he rejoiced when he had completed the world and rejoiced among the children of men. Now then my son, hear me, Baruch is the man who shall hearken to me and the moral who shall keep my way. So then Solomon goes back to talking to whoever he's talking to, or supposedly this could have been David or Bathsheba, you know, telling all this to Solomon, you know. Because it talks about my son, hear me. A lot of the times it sounds like a, a mortal mother or father admonishing Solomon in the early books that he wrote. So, yeah. So, but if you go from verses 22 all the way to like 31 or 30, that's all talking about Yahushua. That's those eight verses are all about him um, and about how he was with Yahuwah from the foundations of the world when everything was created, you know. Um, you know, by the sound of Yahuwah's voice, he created everything. And yet yeah, light, none of the luminaries, as we read earlier today, if anyone that's viewing or listening was with us when we read Genesis earlier, that goes with that because day four is when he makes all the luminaries. So there is no luminaries on day one. There's no way that the sun would have been around, the moon would have been around, or the angels, the stars. So, you know, all right. So let's see here. Mark 4, 39 to 41. So you can cross that with Proverbs 8, 29. There's bunches of places, though. It talks about him um, commanding the seed to stop and all that. I think Psalm 33 is another place. Um, it talks about to stopping the seed. So that's something they obviously, they were getting the connection. I think that's why they were appalled because they started realizing who he was. And he was the creator in human form. And that's why they're all appalled. They're like, who is this man that could command the sea to stop? So let's see here. I, I also wrote down chapter four, verse 17 that you read. Uh, let's see here. 
Um, and I mentioned to my mom, because we've been talking about how easily offended our society is. And it just kind of caught me in the one of the parables you read in Mark. It says, have new root in themselves, so endure, but for a time afterward, when affliction and persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And so I'm noticing <laughs> Yahushua is saying this is a bad thing. <laughs> this is people that fall away are easily offended. So I just wanted to bring that up. That's something to kind of warn us about and uh, try to keep us on guard not to become easily offended. Uh, let's see. I think I had one more note written down here on my notebook. Mark 111 and 16 and 17. I've been trying to track all these Brit Hadashah and Tanakh connections here. Okay, so let's see here. I will. He says he will make them fishermen, right? So... You can find that, I believe, in Jeremiah. Okay, let's see here. Now as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew's brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Yahushua said unto them, Come ye after me, I will make you to become fishers of men. Okay, and you can find this in, in um, the Tanakh, the Old Testament here. I will send fishers. To gather, let's see here. Here we go, Jeremiah 16, 16. So you can cross that with Mark 1, 1, 16 to 17. So Jeremiah 16, 16 says, but now I will send for many fishermen, declares Yahuwah. So this is the father speaking here. And they will catch them. After that, I will send for many hunters and they will hunt them down on every mountain and hill from the crevices of the rocks. I believe the context is not just talking about heathen, it is talking about his own people. It is talking about his own people. So in context, Yahushua is choosing these apostles to be his fishermen, to, to gather his people out of rocks, out of hiding places. That's how I interpret it anyway. I think that's a direct correlation with Mark 1, 16 and 17. Okay. Um, and I think that's about it. I think that's all the notes I have for the five chapters that Brother Jeff read. So um, if anyone, uh, anyone who's watching is interested and wants to join our fellowship, please reach out to any one of us. Um, and um, if you like what you've seen, if you like the content that you saw today, um, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Um, and thank you all of you that, um, we'll see it later on Facebook. Um, and, um, we'll probably see it later on YouTube also. So, um, I pray that this message, this, this, uh, Torah portion was edifying to everyone that was watching and maybe encourage any Christians that are out there, maybe questioning what's going on in the church. And maybe you, who is starting to wake you up, the father's starting to wake you up. Um, and I pray that this would be a message to really make you consider um, keeping the Father's commandments. Um, so thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your Sabbath, all of our brothers and sisters out there. Shalom. <coughs> okay, and the recording. Here we go. Stop.